Basically a fly tied many years ago uh, in a fly tying competition and they actually won me that, uh, the round and the idea behind the, fl uh, or the competition, the rules was to use, I was to tie a silver butcher but then using that colour combination tie another fly and this is the fly I come up with, it's a variant of the goat's toe but it's been a, a great fly over many years both for the sea trout and for whale brown trout. Now this one I'm tying on a B160 size 12, which the shank length is equivalent to a 14, but the gate is equivalent to size 12. Now this is for a, a lock in Ireland down in Killarney, and this hook size works extremely well. Thread I'm going to be using, this is uni thread AO in red. I'm going to start the thread at the eye, come down about 2 to 3 mil, and then take away the waist and then come back up, stop it round about a head length from the eye. Now, when you're tying goat's toes, they're normally, as I say, big in the first sea trout. The feathers are actually quite large. You don't get too many of the small, small feathers, especially for this size of fly, unless you have the full bird, but that's not, we don't normally have that. Now, what you want is a well-marked feather like this one here. It's got a nice blue you want that and fly. Now the way to get around that is to tie these fibres on. All I do is tie them forward. And this is how I get away with the tying the smaller flies. Now all I do is pull the fibre together, get the length that I want, which is the length of the hook, and then I'm going to tie this forward, let's check the length again, forward of the eye. Now I'm going to roll it round the shank using the thread turn quite easy, you just basically keep a hold of the feather and then allow the thread turn to rotate the fibres and then when you come right round into your second turn you can slightly tighten up. I put two or three more turns in, but in the way down, but check to see how they're sitting because you can always go back. Now it's important that you have a bit of space at the for the head area and I have there so I've got enough room. And then we can trim away the waist. Now what I like to do is come in from the back, put a tapered cut in. This will help taper the body. It's much better if you do that. Now another thing I like to do is get a hen hackle. In this case dyed black. And you can use cock hackle if you want. I'm just going to get a wee slightly bigger one here. Now these are just Indian and Chinese cock. Uh, Chinese hen, sorry and uh, they're nice and soft. You don't get, they're not very long, that's the only problem with them. There we are. Now what I do here is remove the fluff at the bottom. Now we turn it so it's facing over the eye as well, so I'm tying it forward. Now what I want here is the inside of the feather facing myself. So come around with a couple of turns, catching in the stem. Trim away the waist. Now the reason I'm doing this is, is if you go down put the tail on, come back up with uh, the tinsel in the body, you start to sort of bulk up a wee bit, and this takes away some of the bulk, especially in a fly this small. It comes together all at the end, you'll see it. Now what I'm going to do is carry on down, just at the point when I'm going round the bend, tie in the tail fibres, which are just a dyed red hackle, there's a cock hackle, a Chinese cock. Nice clean red. Now, don't be shy with the fibres. Bring them 90 degrees from the stem. This will lighten out, uh, line up the tips. Take them away. You're looking for... And the bigger flies are like a long tail. Uh, and this fly, this size here, you're looking for anything round about the length of the hook. So you catch that on the top. A couple of turns just to see where it is, check the length if you're happy you can tighten up a bit more, just let me check, that's ok now I'm coming up about say five, six turns this will form a small red tag 
trim away the waste, the full length of the body. Now I need a wire rib, in this case it's silver. I'm looking for a small, even a medium. Really, you need a wire, it's got to be strong because this is going to hold your hack on in your body. So I turn just to catch it on the side and then the full length of the body again so you don't form like a step. Then I'm using a medium silver holographic tinsel. But you could actually use a standard silver if you want, you don't have to use the holographic. Then work your way up. You want to turn in front of the other and keep it as smooth as you can. You'll have a taper but keep it no lumps, you don't want any lumps and bumps. Because if you have that your tinsel will start to go its own way. You don't want that. And then form your body with the tinsel. Just work your way up right to the hackle. And then you come round three or four turns. Trim your tinsel away. Now what I like to do here is draw these fibres just slightly back so I can bring the thread to the eye ready for tying in or tying off the wire. Now I'm going to use a pair of hackle pliers here, it's much easier to gives you uh, an extension to the hackle because it's so small. Now what I want to do is a, a turn at the top. Now don't worry too much if the hackle starts to twist on you. You can always, it'll work out okay, don't worry. So you turn at the top and then you're going to work the hackle down to the rib. Now don't worry too much, you want a nice even space. And as you get to the tail or get to your rib, then you want to quickly come up with the rib, tying in your hackle and your body. You want to make sure it's well tied in. You take away the hackle, I usually sn snap off the end of the, the hackle there. And then just at this point, I draw back these fibres and then I do like a full turn of the wire and then Come up with your thread, tying in, or tying off your wire. Just make sure you've got it caught. Yeah, I fold it back. And there's a the space you actually formed or left when you tied on the peacock. Just take no things at the moment and then what finish, just keeping everything nice and tight. And then trim away the thread. Bend and break off the wire, and then we can then form a shape, or just draw back the fibres. This keeps it really open, you'll see how the, all the fibres are sitting nice. Now if you want it to sit a wee bit better, we can use the persuader, or the hairdryer, just to give you an idea. Once you start to fish, the fly will get into this shape anyway. So this will give you the idea of the shape. Now I'm just bringing out the fibres where they should be. And then you can see, there you've got your nice open hackle, plenty of movement in the fly. And then all you have to do, or what I like to do is just come round with a wee touch of super glue first, which will dry within seconds and uh, obviously keep the fly really nice and strong but don't touch any of the fibres, try and watch what you're doing and give it a second or two to dry make sure the eye's clean at this point because you don't want to try and remove some super glue there we are so, so you give it a minute and or so and it'll be dry now once the, val the super glue is dry we can come in then just seal it up with some varnish all the way around. I usually tap it onto the eye just with the brush and don't worry if you fill the eye up with the varnish so you can clean that out. Use the old feather here, this is the feather I've been using to for the tail, just use the stem, this will clean it. And there we are. And that's basically what we called at the time Davy's Tay or Davy's Toe which is a variant of the goat's toe and the butcher. 
You see, it's a nice fly. It's a great brown trout fly. Great colour combination. And for the wild brownies in Scotland and Ireland, or in the UK, anywhere, this is a really nice pattern to, to fish. And, and in the bigger sizes, for sea trout especially. <laughs>